sky. Just finishing up my clear gel and white. I got it just on the sky area. I'm gonna go right into some blue and white. Blue and white, and, and right up here, we're gonna put in our blue sky. Of course, you've, you've already seen what we're doing. We're doing mountains today. I think it'll be, be very fun, very pretty. We're gonna do some, some beautiful clouds, but before you can do that, you gotta have the blue. I'm just gonna do a lot of blue sky, and we can cover up a lot of it. What I'll do is, this is the important part, grab a shop towel and wipe off your sky. Hey, we should take a look at the paintings that you guys did of my last one. So if you're not already doing your versions, versions can't speak, and sharing them with me, you should definitely be doing it because it's always so much fun for everybody really to get to see your painting and you guys do such a good job. I'm just gonna continue wiping that sky off. I know it looks a little rough, but at least we won't mix mud. Well, now I'm gonna mix up here, just have a, uh, I don't know, like a purpley gray, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'll just put it up here and see if I even like it. Uh, let's see right here. Oh, don't like it. Way too dark. Way, way, way too dark. So let's lighten it up quite a bit. Wipe, let me show you something's gonna save you a lot of money. <laughs> Wipe your brush out, put your white over here and grab just a little bit of the paint and put it in that pile. Rather than trying to add three tubes of white just to lighten that one mix up and you're gonna have enough to do the next six months worth of paintings. Don't do it that way. Just make yourself a new pile. <laughs> It makes sense until you until you get a paintbrush in your hand, then, then common sense kind of goes out the window, doesn't it? That's why you have to sketch, which is, uh, actually, I didn't mention it, which is what you can see I've done up here. A quick, basic sketch. This will help keep me on track. Now I'm going to make a, a little bit of a warm white, a little red and white. Not, not pink, just warm white, something just so it has a little flavor to it, not just pure white. I went ahead and wiped this off, all the purple grayish stuff. I went ahead and wiped that off with a shop towel. So I'm back again to fairly dry canvas. And I can place in my first little round of white wispy clouds. I almost think I almost think I want a little bit of uh, even a little yellow ochre in it. I'm gonna try it. If I mix green, well, at least you'll have learned a lesson. <laughs> There, a little bit of yellow ochre in that. Oh, I better be careful. But I just want that warmth. Again, just, just gonna throw this out there. I did wipe the canvas off with a shop towel, so there isn't a whole lot of paint up here. That is extremely important. And I think to blend, I think I'm gonna just wipe it again, rather than try to blend it much. Now I had planned to wipe it with a shop towel, but I think I'm gonna just hit it with a blender brush. I'm actually fairly happy with it. So let's see here what happens. You know what it was, I stepped back and I took a look at it and wow, you know what? I kind of liked where it's going. So I'm just gonna try to give it a quick blend and leave it and not really do a whole lot more to it because sometimes you can not only save yourself a lot of time, but just end up with a better result by not doing something. <laughs> you know what? You know exactly what I mean. Oh yes. You, you know, if you make your clouds too sharp, it'll it'll kind of I don't know, make it look too close. Make it just, you know, sharp clouds are beautiful. I do them probably more often than not, but just not with a mountain like this. I think it'll compete and be distract. I know it will. It'll compete and be distracting. We don't want that. All right, that looks good. Yeah, I think that I think that really works. I think it makes it um, just soft enough. You know, nothing crazy. All right, now let's take now let's take some of our gray filbert brush, and I want to just begin placing in these mountains, dark enough where you can tell. Oh, there's something going on up there. Not not too subtle. You know, sometimes we like those subtle mountains. I won't do it too subtle. Okay, we'll make this all right when we put our snow and so on in. You know, it, it won't look great until until you get your details. Until then, it'll kind of look a little weird. I'm okay with that. Uh, by now, you know, <laughs> I've kind of learned to live with it <laughs> until, until you progress. Sometimes, sometimes those beginning oh moments in the painting can be kind of kind of challenging, kind of tough to uh, you know to, to see it. You, you want to quit because it doesn't look right. Just keep going. Just keep going. It'll eventually come out okay. All right, I've got a little bit of gray in there. That'll be just a good base to work with. I've just been filling in all these little areas. You know, you can do it with a two-inch brush. You can do it with a filbert brush. 
do it in two minutes or, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to take my, <laughs> take my sap green, a little bit of my umber, a uh, little bit of black, blue, just anything, just anything. Okay. It'll be all right. Not overly well mixed or anything. And certainly not overly colorful. It's almost a little colorful. What do you think? We can, we can do colors, just don't want to do colors that far away. So let me get more of a, um, well, I didn't change it much. <laughs> it's always harder to paint with subtle colors than it is with vibrant, bold. I mean, I can paint with vibrant, bold colors quickly. Give me subtle colors and I'm quite a bit slower. Because just the tiniest, tiniest drop of paint will change your color dramatically. That's what takes so long. <laughs> it's going from one side to the other and trying to hit that sweet spot right in the middle. There we go. It was very important to get this uh, gray, otherwise you wouldn't have anything to mix down into. Of course, we're working with oil paints and that is one of the one of the advantages of oil paint. You might as well be using the advantage. So now my favorite part of the mountain, which is putting in the shadow snow. It's a little on the light side for shadow snow. I'm gonna just darken it up a little. It's okay. I need some more white. My favorite part though, I've got my quarter inch flat. You can use three quarter flat or the detail brush. Anything you like. Okay, there you go. So pretty. You go so far with this. Get a lot of good angles and results, you know, just, just with a few strokes. It's amazing what can happen, isn't it? It's my favorite part of the mountain. Not the highlights on the mountain, but the, the shadow snow. My favorite part this is where you sculpt 80% of your mountain is with the shadow snow. It's where it lays in the, in the cracks and valleys and so on. And that is just, it's just great. This just popped into my mind, so I'm going to say it. What if you're doing a mountain that doesn't really have any snow? Now I've done those in the past. I would just get me a purple, kind of just a shadowy color, just an extra shadow, a lighter shadow. So that at least you got multiple colors going on. And I would do the very same thing. Same idea, different colors. All right, look at this. Let's get in. A little highlight. We're not going to go super crazy, but we will go just enough to kind of bring out some detail. This is not going to be nearly as extensive, obviously, um, as any of the steps up to this point, because it just doesn't need to be. Maybe up in through here just a little more. You can, you don't have to, but you certainly can. Add in some browns if you want a few browns kind of sprinkled in and through there. But right now I'm just going with the white right up in here. We'll just continue. Big, big section of highlight right there. Now I'm just going to create a couple of very, very quick um, evergreens. I'm just punching in color. There's almost nothing going on here. Very little paint. So this is super easy. I'm just crunching. This is a fairly old fan brush. Actually very old and beat up as you can see. So I'm getting better textures than I maybe otherwise would. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference. But my, I guess my point is save your brushes because you never know when you might want to, to use them. You know, I wouldn't necessarily use this brush for everything. So lighten that color up a little with a blue and white, just because I want this to now fade into the mist a little bit. Okay, kind of like that. You know, this is just the beginning stages is all. It wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of that color in through there. And then, uh, you know, so that'll be kind of faded in. Let's do it right now. Right this minute, I'm gonna take just a two inch brush and tap. Because I'm gonna fade, like I said, fade that into the mist. Okay. So now those are, that's my mist. <laughs> and then check this out. Back to my dark color. And, and I just want a tree. Now it's gonna be lower because we're going down the hill, even though it's probably a closer tree. I'm just gonna punch in. This is just a placeholder. I'm just putting down a tree just so I know the tree is there. I'm going to come back and detail it. And then I got paint to work with. You know, I may detail it right away and I may not. It just depends. Now using a filbert brush, I'm just going to tap in this little leaf tree. Just a nice variety right here toward the middle of the picture. Kind of growing more or less over these evergreens. It doesn't really matter. Just mush it all together. It's got a little brown tinge to it. I think that's fairly pretty. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It is not like super detailed. It's not like, oh, we'll get out the little, probably won't get out the little round brush for it or anything like that. Just, you know, it's kind of something. 
just something a little bit soft. Maybe it's behind the ever. I don't know. Who knows? You can tell I'm real decisive today. Uh, you really shouldn't have to add much of any paint. In fact, I don't, I don't have my palette right now. I just, I'm going to begin to, to bring in a little more refinedness into these trees. I think that makes sense. That looks pretty good. Now, which trees do you spend the most time on? That's very easy. You spend them all, your time on the trees that really show against the light. Uh, it would be silly to come in here, right here, and do a lot when, you know, like right out here, it's really going to stand out. So I wouldn't put as much on this tree as I would in that tree. But, you know, well, this one does. But like right down here, it kind of gets dark. You don't have to worry about it as much. They go faster. It doesn't matter. Right in here doesn't make a bit of difference. But this last inch right here on the top is where I spend more time. I'm just going to go ahead and drop in our rocks. Just get some of the, the rocks in. What will be kind of interesting here is, there we go. See, this is going to be kind of a, like where you can see into the, I'm guessing it's like this valley coming forward, you know, and I see some of it there. And I, this is going to be a big drop off right here. It's just a very interesting to me. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's not as interesting as I think, but I think it's pretty interesting subject matter today. Now, this will be kind of the back side of this rock. I kind of want it to look like it's got a little light reflecting, but this, of course, would be more in the shadow. Don't just use, there's black. I'm not just using black. I'm getting a bunch of nice kind of gray tones. And I'll just place the shadow in. And then right down here, you know, work in some of these shadows. We will be wiping off this area with a shop towel when you're done. So, you know, you don't have to overthink it. I'm just adding some amount of green here, really, um, just to indicate where perhaps, you know, some grass would be. You don't have to stick with this entirely. But and of course, here is going to be some shadow. So make sure this grass here, you, you would expect it to be quite a bit darker um, because of the, the rock here. So kind of just go up and then you know if you want to have some of that green up in the rock that's fine if you don't that's also fine you know i usually keep these rocks fairly dark and fairly simple when you do have rocks like this on just the edge of the paint i, I think that makes sense now i'm just going to tap in just basically identical to the other trees there tap in some more evergreens the same way oh this is not any big thing just trying to get some amount of uh, paint just on the canvas so we can work with it the same way. Very, very dark, dark green. Uh, one tip to get a really dark green, take some blue, some satin green, which I'm almost out of, and some yellow. Put some yellow in there with your black, of course. You need to be pretty dark. It just makes a nice color. Watch this. What happens if, and I'm just sort of thinking out loud, <laughs> but what happens if we took some sort of a brown? It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Uh, slide through a little light. So you got brown, dark brown on one side, light brown on the other side. Something along those lines. Yeah, that looks about right. So I got my brush double loaded. And I'm going to come all the way up off the top. And without touching, hardly touching the canvas, I'm just going to pull down. Oops, now reload. Make sure you do it right. And that way I got uh, a little bit of a really neat looking tree trunk in there. Reload, same exact thing. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. You know what, is it perfect? No, but that's kind of neat. And then if you want to just put in a, there, something to work with. That one's going to be kind of sparse, but for sure buried here in the middle. So I'm going to take some yellow, a little bit of a uh, little bit of blue. I still need to get some sap green out. Um, that'll make a nice green though. That'll work. And I'm going to begin to just, just only begin to highlight. This is just phase one. I did wipe off with a shop towel. I've got these blue shop towels. I did wipe off this whole area with one so that I could highlight. Otherwise, you're not going to highlight. <laughs> you're just going to make mud. So it's up to you. But this makes it so easy. Excellent. Just the beginning stages, you know. There. 
Okay. We'll continue here. You, you can hit this with a fan brush and do all sorts of things to it in order to really bring it to life. But for now, I'm just laying in color. Now, using a fan brush, I'm going to put on an accent highlight just by tapping. Nothing, uh, nothing that's too much different. I did get some fresh white and yellow so that at least it's very, very bright. And I'll just work that color in and around, you know. Of course, up here is a little closer, so the grass is a little bigger. Over here, it's a little less close, so, you know, just kind of plan accordingly, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Let me show you down here at least, you know, sunlight kind of filtering through. The whole thing, again, would not be bright, just bits here and there would. So we'll do just exactly that. I'm going to go ahead and sculpt these cliffs here a little better. I got some more yellow ochre. And I think this will be interesting. Of course, this is the highlight side of the cliff face. Another touch here and there. Just, just enough to brighten this up. If this isn't sticking, wipe this area off. And I'm just using my little three-quarter brush, which is plenty good for this. As we go around, I'm going to go ahead and get a little darker. Just so that, you know, it's not quite so distinct. Because, of course, this would be shadowy because this is rounded, right? Now I'm just going to spend a minute or two highlighting this tree. I won't go too crazy with it. Just a, just a bit, and you know, it's finally time. Finally time. Just with the little detail brush, you know. And you make it as bright or as, as not too bright as you like. I guess it's dull. You don't really want it dull. There's a little bit. You can always finish with the liner brush and just dot these little touches of sparkling light on it. I'm just doing it here with the... Uh, so just pushing right into that paint and pulling it out, kind of got that dot of, of highlight built up very bright. That's one good way to do an accent highlight because that way, see, my brush isn't actually touching down. Just the paint blob is the only thing touching. Then you reload frequently and just let that paint blob touch and you will never have any mixing because it's just so delicate. Well, it certainly is good. I didn't spend very long on these rocks on this side. The whole time, the, all day, I've been planning to do um, trees on this side and I was planning on doing them large. They were going to be my biggest trees. For some reason, I just didn't put two and two together that, hey, I may not have much rocks left. So I did this tree. And by the time I was done with that tree, I was about here. And I was like, oh, my rocks are gone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually love those rocks anyways. Those were probably not. They were the worst rocks in the whole painting. So it was just kind of weird. They went straight down, like right on the side. And there was like this little highlight smashed against the corner. So I think actually by keeping the corner darker and a little bit less detailed, I think it's going to be better. So that's why you see I've, I've actually toned back my highlight. My trees over here are much brighter. I still need to highlight these trees, but it's all the same idea. And uh, and this way, it'll kind of, I think it'll just be a better, it, it already looks better to me. So there you go. Now, one of the last things we're going to do is add in final details, such as, you know, uh, tree trunks and so on. I like this tree. Kind of, kind of interesting. See that? Be kind of growing out just better than straight up and down like a lollipop, don't you know? There, just get a few of these limbs, kind of taking my time. Obviously, we already established some limbs when we first did the tree, but now make it a little more interesting. Just a few, and then up in here for sure, you're going to want some on these big trees. I just did that, that with a detail brush, barely got that in there. Now I can get some good ones. Even get a shadow side to this tree. Perfect. Some, sometimes, honestly, you can do the whole tree with just a liner brush if you'd rather do the highlight and everything. It's just up to you. Well, that about wraps up this little mountain painting for today. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.